Hello everyone. Welcome to my video presentation for week two of our intro to Python class. My name is Tom Weidian and I live in Ben Salem, Pennsylvania, which is a suburb of Philadelphia in the eastern portion of uh, the United States. Today, I wanted to present to you local and global variables in Python. Before we get into the technicalities of uh, global variables and local variables in Python, I wanted to tell you a story. So last Monday, I went to my local bank. Let's call my bank Green Bank. I went up to the first bank teller that was available. His name was Jeff. I said, hello Jeff, my name is Tom and I just opened up a bank account here at Green Bank just last week and I wanted to make my very first deposit into my new account. Jeff said, that's great Tom, I'll help you with that and he took my money and he reached into his drawer in his cubicle took out a notebook and he marked down that I deposited fifty dollars alright on Tuesday morning I went to my green bank again and went up to the first available teller and this time I got a nice lady named uh, Mary I said hello Mary I wanted to make another deposit into my account here's a hundred dollars Mary said that's great Tom I'll help you with that and she took my money reached into her drawer in her cubicle took out a notebook and she marked down that I deposited I deposited one hundred dollars alright on Wednesday morning I went to my green bank again and went up to the first available teller and this time I got Mark I said hello Mark I wanted to check the balance on my account Mark said that's great Tom I'll help you with that and he reached into his drawer in his cubicle took out his notebook and looked for my name and he looked up and said I'm sorry Tom I don't have you marked down as having deposited anything I said Mark that's not good because on Monday I came in and deposited fifty dollars with Jeff and Tuesday I came and deposited another hundred dollars with uh, Mary and now you're telling me that you don't have me, have me as having deposited any money in my account? That's certainly an error. Oh, that explains everything, Mark replied. See, uh, here at Green Bank, we all have local notebooks. And I can only see what's in my local notebook. And I cannot see what Mary is storing in her local notebook or what Jeff is storing in his local notebook. Ah, I exclaimed. Well, what we need to do here at Green Bank is to have a, a global notebook that all the tellers have access to. And whenever someone makes a deposit, you should mark it down in this global notebook. What a brilliant idea, Mark commented. And we got all the tellers together. And we talked to the branch manager. And we set up a global notebook that all the tellers can look up any time and we combined all the deposits from all the tellers into this great global notebook and got everything straightened out okay thanks for indulging me on my silly story but I wanted to carry over the principles that I shared in the story to our Python programs when we initially started writing code we were writing them in a linear fashion you know our programs were executing uh, more or less uh, top to bottom then we started learning about functions uh, and conditional logic and events and event handlers. We soon realized the power of Python and the event-driven programming model, where our programs are not so linear anymore. Uh, segments of our code gets executed at different intervals or when invoked by certain events. But all that leads us to needing a good way for information to, information to be shared between our functions. And right now we have a, we have we have the concept of global variables that we can use to do that. And if you look at my model here, this green area represents the part of our Python code that is not enclosed uh, in a function. In that area, we can in, we can initialize various things 
we could start our uh, timers, uh, draw our canvas, so on and so forth. Then we have functions. As we learned uh, last week, functions are like little magical boxes that concentrate on one thing, on, on one particular unit of task that we can call from various areas of our code or invoke them via events and also execute them uh, multiple times. And within our functions, we often need to declare some variables to do you know our computations or or the work that this uh, that a particular function is designed uh, to do so we initialize those variables and those are known as local variables and as the name implies the scope for those variables is just the function represented uh, in this bluish green area those variables only exist you know when when this uh, particular function is run so we can make a global variable to do the same task but why if you have a local variable and all it's used for is this tiny little function here we don't want to be sloppy and declare them as a global variable because because now all the other functions in our program also have access to that and maybe it's meant to store something that is sensitive that you don't want another function to see uh, see its value or modify that value if no other functions or areas of the code need access to that variable then we should get into the habit of using or defining them as local variables secondly we haven't uh, really we haven't really talked about memory allocation or garbage collection in this class, but from my general experience with uh, other programming language uh, languages, I imagine that there will be a bigger memory overhead for your programs for keeping those global variables around than if you declare them as local and only have it be in memory when, when that particular function is called. So we use local variables when we want to store something that is only of value to a particular function. And we want to get rid of it when we are done running that function. Now, global variables, on the other hand, is something that can be accessed by all your functions and modified by those functions, at least from what we've learned thus far in class. In my silly story from before, I give you an example as to when a global variable may come in handy. In the case of a bank program, you may want a common storage location where you can mark down a customer's bank balance. And then multiple functions such as make a deposit, check, check the balance, withdraw money, could all use that global variable that you have defined so that the data it contains will be maintained correctly when various actions or events happen. All right, let's consider another example. Another benefit of using a global variable is code maintenance. Let's consider this example that I have here. So you have a database integrated program that you're writing. And it is a very complex program, and it has thousands and thousands of lines of code. And in your program, you define all your functions to handle various business tasks. For example, you may have a, a get all customers function that goes to a database and fetches all the customer records from the database. So one way to do that would be to initialize a, a database connection string and in this string you know you will set up uh, your parameters like your server address, uh, your database uh, username, your database password and after you initialize that you know you write the code uh, to connect to the database and then fetch the data that you need. Then you know you might have another function to add a new customer into the database, and once again, you know you set up your database connection string, and uh, you go to the database and add that new record in the database. You might have another function to add an order uh, that a customer made, and you see me doing the same thing here. And you might have a, a lot of other functions uh, by the time your program is done. 
so after you've written all this code say the very next day your database server goes down and you need to switch all the customers you need to switch your application to a different database at that time you would need to go through your program look at all your database connection string instances in each of these functions and modify it accordingly a better way to do that would be to initialize a global variable instead where you set up your database connection string and instead of creating these local variables to do uh, to initialize that uh, information you would simply use the global variables uh, value to connect to your database and fetch your information so in this uh, in this case you have if you if you need to move to a different server like server B for instance you could simply change it in one place and have all your functions still work correctly all right all right I would like to end with this simple demo that I have set up here in code sculptor I have a simple program here at the top here I have a variable called bank balance and this would be a global variable because it does not reside in a particular function and I'm initializing it with the value zero and then I have a few simple functions below it first of all a deposit money function which takes in one parameter an amount and it's pretty simple here it prints out depositing money out to the console then it makes a reference to my bank balance variable which is defined here we know we are making a reference to that global variable because I have the keyword global stated here and then it takes that uh, global variable and adds the amount that was passed in into this function and then it makes another function called called check balance and if you look at my check balance function here it's pretty simple it spits out the bank balance value back back to the console so we could see what our balance is I have another function withdraw money and that's pretty self-explanatory it takes the money that we pass into the function and deducts it from our bank balance variable and prints out our balance all right so let's go ahead and test this so first let's call the deposit money function and I'm going to pass it 100 before we run it let's try to guess what the answer is going to be so we're calling this function with 100 which makes a reference to our bank balance variable which has an initial value of 0 we're adding 100 to that and we should get an output of 100 let's see and sure enough we see a balance of 100 all right now let's go ahead and withdraw some money so my guess is that I'll see a 50 as my final balance and sure enough first we deposited a hundred dollars then we withdrew fifty dollars and our final balance is fifty so I have one last function here called testing and in here I'm referencing this bank balance variable and I'm giving it the value five thousand and then I'm running the check balance uh, function let's see what happens I'm going to comment my initial calls and just run testing it tells me that my bank balance is zero why is that I thought we initialized it with the value of 5000 that is because to this function bank balance we are simply defining a local variable here when I run check balance that is referencing my global variable if in fact I wanted to change this variable here as I did in the other functions I would use the global keyword to let Python know that I really want to change my global variable here and then give it the value that I want it and then I'm calling my check balance function once again so let's see uh, what happens and sure enough it changes my global variable and I see the value of 5000 which is what we gave it and that's it for this week thank you so much for watching